transport is running. Free dive safety briefing has been completed. I'm in a plastic pod in the middle of the ocean off Bermuda's southeast coast. This thing is smaller than a Volkswagen Beetle. As six-foot swells toss our tiny submersible, I think, well, this was a terrible idea. Then suddenly, the pod tips forward. The descent begins. Here we go. The rocking slowly stops as the ocean swallows us. All that's left is peace. No more emails, no claustrophobia, just the whole ocean spread in front of us in a scientific quest. ScienceScope visited Bermuda to travel hundreds of feet underwater with the privately funded Nekton mission and to see the threats harming more than a third of the planet's coral reefs because some coral may adapt by going deeper. Nekton is a, a brand new project aimed at exploring and documenting life in the deep ocean but also showing the public what lives in deep ocean, what it does for humankind, and also what impacts humans are having on the deep sea. The project plans to measure biodiversity and ocean chemistry at three sites in the Atlantic. The team uses a variety of tools, among them two Triton submersibles called Nemo and Nomad. They're the same type used by filmmaker and ocean explorer James Cameron. Capable of diving 1,000 feet, these mini-subs are equipped with the latest filming and scientific equipment. They'll document the vast, uncharted void that is the deep sea. Well, at present, about 0.0001% of the deep sea has been explored by scientists like myself. Uh, our goal is to set up a standard protocol for investigating the deep sea. Over the course of four hours, we glide across huge portions of the sea floor. This is called a transect. The scientists videotape and ultimately identify as many species as possible. On the limestone, we have coral garden habitat. Uh, the bright white corals are hydrocorals. The yellow corals are gorgonians. And the wire corals are black corals. Oodles of fish dart back and forth in this abyss, while moray eels stick out their neon green necks from the seabed. But the team can identify species even when they're not physically around, using environmental DNA. So you can imagine if you put your hand in a big glass of water and a few cells fall off your hand with your DNA in them, then we would be able to take that water and sequence it and find out that you've you've been there and you've put your hand in the water. The scientists collect water samples to do the same with ocean critters, which shed cells with DNA in many forms. Scales, shells. Poop as well. <laughs> Poop is a great source of DNA. <laughs> Closer to the surface, Nekton conducts similar surveys by relying on research divers from Project Baseline, a global citizen science initiative. These divers film the biodiversity, but also collect physical specimens for researchers like Gretchen Goodbody Gringley. She studies how corals migrate from shallow water into the deeper, darker mesophotic zone. Located 131 to more than 500 feet underwater, this deeper region may one day serve as a refuge for corals affected by bleaching and other threats. Many of the anthropogenic or human-caused threats that are impacting shallow water coral reefs, such as increases in seawater temperature, increases in pollution, sedimentation, and runoff from the land, these all impact the shallow water reef more than they are impacting the mesophotic reef. Warming waters cause coral bleaching, as seen here with mushroom coral. The coral expels its colorful symbiotic algae, which have become toxic due to the heat. This coral also expands to 340% of its size. If this event occurs too frequently, the coral won't only bleach, it'll die. All corals start as little larvae that get swept around by currents before attaching in a single spot. So Gringley, Rogers, and the Nekton team use these underwater surveys and environmental DNA to see which shallow water corals can also live in the mesophotic zone and maybe one day use this deeper ocean as a hideout. 
So if you have high levels of genetic diversity across geographic range or across depth range, this would be indicative of mixing. Uh, so the larvae are, in fact, migrating between zones. So from these teeny tiny samples, her team can unlock how generations of corals have migrated. The results will clear up which coral species can migrate and which can't. Conservation scientists in the future can use this information to best protect these critical critters. Maybe by preserving them in aquariums or physically transplanting them from shallow water to the mesophotic zone. The deep ocean is the most critical frontier for humanity and is also the least known. The deep ocean is our beating heart. And if you didn't know how healthy your heart was, wouldn't you want to know? Until next time, I'm Seacon Akpan and this is Science Scope from the PBS NewsHour.